This video is all about nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are your DNA, your RNA, and together they make up the code for life. So nucleic acids will be the topic of this video. And as complex as life is, nucleic acids actually by themselves aren't that complex. They're just made up of sugar, they're made up of a nitrogenous base, and some phosphate groups. The sugar could be ribose, ribose, which is seen in RNA, that's where the R comes in, or it can be deoxyribose, and that's seen in DNA. Nitrogenous bases, the different bases make up the different kind of nucleic acids, so you can have your purines and your pyrimidines. Since seventh grade biology, they've taught the same old mnemonic or the same old memory aid, which is pure as gold or cut the pie. So your purines are your adenine, your guanine. Your pyrimidines are gonna be your cytosine, your uracil, and your thymine. So just some basics. Uracil is found in RNA, thymine is found in DNA. And structurally, they're very similar. If you lose a methyl group from thymine, you make uracil. So it's not some new complicated complex. It's just thymine without its methyl group. That's uracil. But I won't go into too much of the basics. That's more in the notes. I do want to spend some time on the biochemistry of it. I think that's where students can get caught up. In particular, I want to tell you about the synthesis of nucleic acids. And you make nucleic acids through something called the H M P shunt or the hexomonophosphate shunt. Does this HMP shunt fit into our backbone that we've been talking about all these videos? So nucleic acids are made of a sugar, so it should, because we've been spending three videos talking about sugar, it better fit into our backbone. We'll start with the most basic, glycolysis. So glucose turns into glucose 6-phosphate, which turns into fructose 6-phosphate, then on and on, but we'll stop right here because this is where it fits in. The HMP shunt starts with glucose 6-phosphate, and it goes into a side reaction. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is the enzyme that works on it. A few things you need to know about this is that this is oxidative, which means electrons are exchanged. It is irreversible. Oxidative. And also, you create a product called NADPH, which helps neutralize free radicals. We'll talk about this in subsequent videos. You need to know these facts first. And then lastly, it is the rate limiting step. So that turns glucose 6-phosphate into 6-phosphogluconolactone. Phosphogluconolactone, which eventually becomes ribulose. So we're getting close. 5-phosphate, and ribulose 5-phosphate is the money. This is the key. This goes on to make your pyrimidines and pyrimidines. However, before we get into that, I just want to show you that if you don't want to go into that just yet, you can enter it back into the cycle through transketolase, the enzyme transketolase. A couple facts about transketolase, it needs thymine. B1. So thymine transkylase both start with T. It is non-oxidative, electrons aren't exchanged, it is reversible. So reversible and non-oxidative. So if you don't want to make purines and pyrimidines, you can just shunt it back, go to glycolysis, make your sugar, etc. But that's not the point of this video. Our point of this video is seeing 
how pairings and pyrimidines are made. Let me move this over. Ribulose 5-phosphate, again, is the money. So ribulose 5-phosphate makes something called PRPP. Full name will be in the notes. Via PRPP synthase. And PRPP can become pyrimidines or pyrines. Those, of course, are your pure as gold. Pyrimidines are cut the pie. So, CUT. We'll start with the pyrines first. PRPP becomes IMP, also known as inositic acid. IMP becomes GMP and AMP. AMP becomes your adenine. GMP becomes your guanine. That's it for pairings. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This is how we synthesize pairings from scratch. However, that's the minority. Most of the times we get it in our diet or through waste and we recycle it back. That's called the pairing salvage pathway. Again, that's where we get the majority of our pairings. So let's spend some time talking about that. So we're gonna start with our IMP, just like here. However, it's from dietary sources or, or what have you, we're not making it from scratch. But it does the same thing, turns into GMP and AMP. And those eventually, through a couple steps, make your adenine and guanine. So GMP, through a couple steps, turns into guanosine, and then finally your guanine. And the reason it's called the pyrene salvage pathway is because at guanine, there's an enzyme that brings it back. And that is H, H G P R T, or hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribotransferase. I think HGPRT will be fine. HGPRT brings it back, salvages it. IMP kind of goes through the same steps. IMP eventually becomes adenosine, and that becomes hypoxanthine. Again, HGPRT will bring it back, salvage it, and that can create your pairings again. If it doesn't need to be salvaged, then hypoxanthine will eventually <coughs> become xanthine via the enzyme xanthine oxidase xanthine again via xanthine oxidase becomes uric acid and that leaves your body in your urine so if you don't need to bring it back you can just pee out the rest via uric acid so that makes GMP and IMP. What about AMP? AMP has a slightly different method. Here, AMP turns into adenosine. And then via the enzyme adenosine deaminase, AKA ADA or ADA. So ADA is adenosine deaminase. It will become anosine. And then can either be salvaged or pee it out as uric acid. That is it, that is your pairing, both creating it from scratch and from salvaging it. Again, salvaging is where most of your pairings come from. Now, what can go wrong? Well, anytime you think of uric acid, you should be thinking of gout. We're gonna talk about gout to death in MSK. It's not a, a subject that's very hard to grasp. Most medical students grasp it well, easy to identify really exquisitely tender big toe, uric acid crystals, etc., etc. 
that's not the problem. I'm not gonna talk too much about gout. I'm gonna talk a little bit more biochemy path that you might see. The first is a deficiency in this enzyme, HGPRT. If you don't have that, then you can't salvage things back. You can't salvage guanine back. You can't salvage IMP back or AMP. And thus everything is funneled down to uric acid to excrete. You're gonna have so much uric acid, it's unbelievable. It's usually seen first in kids because they're born with a deficiency in that enzyme. And again, your uric acid levels are off the charts. You're gonna have that uric acid causing gout. You're gonna have uric acid causing neurotoxicity. They're gonna have mental retardation. They might have tendency to self-harm. The uric acid is gonna be so much that it'll precipitate out of their urine. If you open a kid's diaper, it'll look like orange sand. We call all that lesh Nihon syndrome. And it's a deficiency in that enzyme. So Lesh Nihon deficiency in HGPRT. Another thing you can have, you can have a deficiency in ADA, adenosine deaminase. And we don't have that, your purine salvage pathway is off. You don't make the majority of your purine and it halts B cells and T cells. So ADA deficiency stops B and T cells and causes skid. Different things that cause skid, but always remember ADA deficiency because that integrates biochem and they like that on the boards. I think we talked enough about perines. Let's not neglect our friend pyrimidines. We'll talk about that next. Moving on to pyrimidine synthesis. Pyrimidines, of course, we'll start with PRPP, but it also needs a contributor from glutamine. Glutamine and a little bit of CO2. Glutamine and CO2 will help enter the cycle and then with PRPP, make our pyrimidines. So glutamine first gets worked on by carbonyl phosphate synthase two. And that makes carbonyl phosphates. Carbonyl phosphate is worked on by dihydroorotate dehydrogenase that makes auritic acid. And auritic acid gets worked on by UMP synthase, which makes UMP. And that's where they converge. Auritic acid and PRPP converge together to make UMP. UMP makes UDP and that becomes CTP, which if you remember from cut the pie, that's C. That is your cytosine. And it also makes something called D-U-M-P, or dump. And that is your U, or uracil. You might say, well, where is the T, thymine? How are thymine and uracil related again? Could you tell me? Didn't I say if thymine lost a methyl group, it will make uracil? So if you add a methyl group to D-U-M-P, you would make, you would make a precursor for thymine. So we have to somehow add a methyl group on there to make our DTMP, which eventually makes our thymine. Via the enzyme thymidine, thymidine synthase. You're synthesizing thymidine. The thing that gives us that methyl group is actually found in your diet. That is your folate. Those are in your leafy greens, so eat lots of those. So a form of folate that we see is tetrahydrofolate. That becomes 
5,10 tetrahydrofolate, and that is what gives us our methyl group. That becomes when it loses it, when it loses a methyl group, it will become dihydrofolate. And that is recycled and re able to be reused again by an enzyme called, I'll put it up here, dihydrofolate reductase. And that is how you make pyrimidines. Hope that wasn't too complex. I just want to tie in a few loose ends before we continue. Remember your urea cycle. If you don't, just pull it up, have a quick review. The most common enzyme deficiency in the urea cycle is your ornithine transcarboxylase deficiency. And that causes a buildup of carbonyl, carbonyl phosphate. I said that you'd have a lot of buildup of carbonyl phosphate. You also have a lot of buildup of this metabolite, auritic acid. That's where auritic acid comes in. So hopefully that clears that part up. Secondly, let's see what can go wrong in this pyrimidine cycle. One thing that can go wrong is you can be deficient in this enzyme UMP synthase. That means you can't take auritic acid into UMP and you'll have a buildup of auritic acid. How is that different than what we just talked about? Both have a buildup of auritic acid. Well, to differentiate the two, well, the difference is that UMP synthase has nothing to do with your urea cycle. So there will be no increased ammonia in your blood. That's how you differentiate the two. They'll tell you that in the question stem. But that does it for what naturally can go wrong in this whole cycle. However, pharmaceutically, we like to target these with drugs. Why would we do that? Well, for example, if you have cancer and you have uncontrolled cell growth, uncontrolled peri and pyrimidines, then you want to target that with anti-cancer drugs. You want to target this pathway. Another thing is immunosuppression. If you want to immunosuppress the patient for whatever reason, you might want to limit the perines and pyrimidines that make up B and T cells. Okay? So there's a lot of things we can do, a lot of drugs we can do that affect the cycle. Let's talk about some of those now. We'll start with perines. That is your 6MP or as prodrug or as prodrug azathioprine. It also works on the purine salvage pathway. Either way, you decrease purines that way. You can also stop the conversion of IMP to anything else like GMP via immunosuppressions such as mycophenolate or the antiviral ribavirin. That's your pyrimidines. Your pyrimidines, you can block this enzyme, dihydroornitate, dihydroornitate dehydrogenase by a drug called, put it up here, put it on the side, I guess, leflonamide. That's just an immunosuppressant. We can work our way down. Stop UDP from converting into dump or DTMP by a drug called hydroxyurea, which is a chemo drug. If you're having trouble reading this, they'll all be in my notes. Don't worry about that. Thymidine synthase can be inhibited by 5-FU, the chemo drug. And then this whole folate cycle, especially dihydrofolate reductase, the enzyme that recycles it, can be blocked by things like methotrexate. So methotrexate, pimethamine, which is an anti-parasite. I think that does it for nucleic acids. Hope you understand how it's made both uh, pairings from scratch and the pairing salvage cycle. Hope you understand just what can go wrong with that salvage cycle. So Lesh Nihon ADA deficiency. Know your pyrimidine cycle. And then lastly, know the drugs that inhibit what and why they do it, either for immunosuppression, uh, chemo, or antiviral, bacterial, parasitic, etc. That is nucleic acids. That does it for this video. See you next time.